All right, let's start. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Dr. Yuzo. Uh, this is ECE 341 Power System class. And today is our lecture 21. And uh, we just uh, uh, have gone through a uh, midterm. And today is uh, here in the GAN chart. Uh, can you guys hear me? All right, thank you. All right. So we can go ahead. Uh, first lecture today for new module six, transmission line modeling and performance analysis. Uh, so before we start to talk about this module, uh, is there any questions since we just uh, done the second midterm? Very quite uh, determining one towards your final uh, grade. Uh, so any questions, any feedback, any concern regarding this course, anything like that? Do you guys have anything like that? Not necessarily the knowledge-wise, but also in respect of the uh, course, anything? Probably uh, the question is too generic and... Uh, well, if any, uh, let me say it this way. If any, please just email me, let me know. And if you want to set up an appointment to talk about your performance, talk about the course, talk about the uh, what to do in, in, in future, in future month, uh, then please do so by shooting me email. Um, because obviously this is a very critical um, point, the time point. So. Uh, if anything like those, just let me know. Because after this, I'm afraid it's going to be too late to, to change anything. Right? All right, let's uh, move on. Let's move on. Um, now we're going to talk about everything under the account. Okay. So this module is about transmission line. So first of all, uh, transmission line parameters. So all transmission line Exhibit electrical properties of of what? I think it is a fair question, even though we haven't um, been taught anything. What's the electrical properties uh, elect uh, the transmission could have? Of course, by the way, what does it mean by electrical properties? Uh, how about impedance? Oh, very good. Okay, that's definitely one, right? The impedance for sure. Impedance 100% sure. sure. And then if we break the impedance down, then what are we, we going to have? Is this, uh, or let's, let's do this. Let's do a kind of a summary. Okay, let's do a summary. Yeah, by a different color. <clears throat> so called the electrical property. Impedance is one of them. Impedance is one of them. Impedance. By the way, impedance, uh, what is the simple letter representing impedance? Z. Z. Here we go. Very good. Yeah, Z. Impedance consists of what? This is what I uh, what I mentioned as so-called. Let's break the impedance down. Then what do we have? RLC. Well, RLC. Well, actually, you 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 cannot say that in this way. Okay, our impedance. 
is not equal to RLC. No. The resistance I mean, and reactants. A very good resistance and resistance. And reactants. And how they summed up? Can can I just directly do this? Can I? Or or say no, how to you correct? Need a, you need a J term for that complex. Very good. Okay, you, you need a J term here. You need a J term here. Okay. So reactance is the imaginary part of the impedance. Okay. And resistance is the, essentially the real part of the impedance. Resistance, well, I can save the question. Represented by R. And then what letter is representing the reactance? X. X, good. And how we related to the, uh, like Anil said, RLC then. How we related the resistance and reactance to RLC. Here, right? Okay, so resistance just equals to resistance value. So this is R. Okay. X equals to Y. X equals to Y. Equals Y. Omega L or inductor over omega C for the uh, negative, right? For the capacitor, right? Does it make sense? So the reactance of the inductor is positive, the reactance of the capacitor is uh, negative, right? This is the impedance. Okay. Any uh, questions? <laughs> a Q, a Q is, uh, I think, is a reactive power. Right? It's, a, it's reactive power. Q is not playing a role in any uh, electrical properties. No, no. You don't have this. Then we also ever heard of. Uh, Properties like what? Admittance and the conductance, right? Have you heard of th those? And how they are taking to this picture, the summary then? Anyone knows? Or say, the, what's the relationship among them? So many properties. Anyone knows any part of it? We can kind of piece by piece, build them up. For example, let me ask you, what is what is conductance? What do you know about conductance? Uh, well, I know one of them is the inverse of one of those ones up there. I just don't remember which which one is the, uh, uh, the imaginary part and which one's the real. <laughs> Yep, that's basically what Noah provided some some piece. Well, only pieces though. Uh, Sawyer is saying uh, admittance is Y. Good, very good. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's first of all Y uh, minor. Oh yeah, equals to one over Z. Oh, very good. Okay. You see, yeah, Sawyer is uh, providing more pieces. First of all, admittance one D, I think. Which is represented by Y. Okay. Which represent Y. And the there, there's a relationship between admittance and the impedance. How? Huh? But just the Y equals to one over Z. Good, very good. Yeah, very good. This is actually not something new. This is not something new. Because back back to the previous module, uh, when we calculate the line flow, we need what? Line impedance or line admittance, right? Remember, the exam problem is give is giving the admittance, isn't it? And the example in the class probably giving the uh, impedance and and the admittance. So this is some. This is not something new. This is not something new. Okay. 
And then what else? Anyone know anything else about anything else? G equals to o, 1 over R. What is G then? Conductance, good, good. Okay, so so Anil and uh, Sawyer is providing more information here. So first of all, admittance equals to what? This also is a, a complex number. It's also equals to complex number. First, it has real part and the emitter part. Real part is called conductance. Okay, conductance. Conductance. As uh, Anil mentioned, is represented by G. Okay, letter G. And then plus J times the emitter part. Now, what is the emitter part? Uh, this is something, uh, to be very honest, I personally uh, never use. Okay. It's called um, susceptance. Susceptance. Okay. Represented by, anyone know this guy? Anyone knows? Susceptance, what is it? B, yeah, B. So y equals to G plus JB. Okay, susceptance. These are the uh, the full picture, the full picture. Well, uh, let me ask you this. Can, can we simply just say the conductance of the admittance is the reciprocal of the resistance of the impedance? Can, can we simply say that? Can we do that? And once again, G equals to one over R, is it? Anyone else? Yes or no? And I can't for a yes. Anyone move for a no? I vote yes. Uh, John vote for a yes. Anyone vote for a no? David vote for a yes. Anyone else? No, actually. This is uh, not right, except you only have resistance. There's no reactance. Does it make sense? But the mathematical is very simple. If you only have 5 ohm, you don't have a emitter part, then yes, then, then 1 over 5, this is the conductance. Oh, by the way, what's 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 the, we skip one thing? What's the unit for for impedance? What's the unit? What's the unit for impedance? Oh, good. What's the unit for resistance? So I can save this question. What unit for reactance? Must be okay. Must be ohm. Now, otherwise, no sense. Okay, your result is ohm, and then you ohm plus something else. No, that that's impossible, right? So you can tell the units for these three guys are also uniform, right? So what 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 are they? What is the unit unit? Anyone knows what is the unit? Siemens, very good, very good. Siemens, just S. Okay, Siemens, very good, very good. Okay, I. Due to this reciprocal relationship, I ever seen uh, people writing the unit for admittance as this. 
Anyway, so it should be Siemens. Okay, I don't use this. The reciprocal. So you flip the own down. Well, anyway, Siemens. Okay. And then I'll go back to the original question. So, so is G equals to reciprocal of R directly? Well, if only for resistance exists, there's no any other. Yes, then point two as the conductance, no problem. It's, it's absolutely right. However, if you're talking about impedance, okay, impedance is equals to say five plus ten j. Right? Your admittance equals to one over z, no problem. So one over five plus ten j. That's absolutely correct. But this guy equals another complex number, right? Does it make sense to you? This end up with a, another complex number. We don't need to have to find out the, the, the value for real part and the middle part, but is A equals to five? Is it? Definitely not. Does it make sense? Because five is the what is the R? Right? This guy is R. A is what is the G, right? G is not equal to R. Or I mean, G is not equal to one over R. I mean, that's what I mean. Reciprocal of it. Does it make sense? So this is true only when only resistance exists. Uh, does it make sense or any questions? Now, by the way, here to this one, I just use my calculator to to calculate. This is this is equal. Was point zero four minus point zero eight j. So obviously, point zero four is not equal to one over five here. Understand what I'm talking about here? Response, please. Anything? Understood. Okay, thank you. So you can move on now. Anyways, this is a overall picture of the electrical properties. I probably can hardly come across anything outside of these six. So you want to keep this. You want to keep this. Okay. All right, let's go back to here. Actually, what properties? Okay, we just summarized all of the properties. No, but what properties exhibit inside of the transmission line? Impedance, correct, but actually you can break this down. So transmission line ex exhibits resistance, inductance, capacitance. Therefore, these two contributing are the uh, reactance. This guy contributing the uh, resistance, right? And what? And the conductance. Conductance. Resistance, inductance, capacitance, and conductance. And of course, here, resistance is fairly easy to understand, but where does the inductance come from? Where the capacitance? from where does the uh, come from inductance is due to what anyone would, uh, somehow understand this or any gassy change of current change of currents 
Fu, um, not exactly. Not exactly. Uh, is the reason of the due to the existing magnetic field and the capacitance is due to the what you guys learn this is ec235 knowledge uh, how to build an inductance we need what we need a wire winding onto a what four right so build a magnetic field. How the, the how to how do you build up a capacitance? What what do you do? You need two parallel plates. Very good, very good. Op oppositely charge the plates in parallel. Place in parallel, right? So charge the plates meaning what? Electric. Electric field. Okay. So, due to the structure of the transmission line, you have these two fields there. Therefore, you, you have inductance and capacitance as properties. And the conductance, conductance is what? Conduct. Uh, by the way, what, what, what does the conductance, how to describe this conductance? Mm, any, anyone knows? It's kind of capability of what conductance. It's actually this is a conductance means the uh, the capability of passing through. A current, okay, current. Okay, this is the uh, the nature of the conductant. But the higher the conductance, well, what happened? It, the, the, the easier the current can go through. The next, this conductance is due to what? Leakage of current, which is very small, therefore, Negligible. Yeah, leakage current, to generally speaking, is very small. We we can we can neglect it, but it does exist. Uh, by the way, what, what does it mean by leakage current? Uh, anyone knows anything about leakage current? Uh, leakage current happens uh, very very uh, actually very common. In, in machines, so how does this happen? Anyone knows anything about it? Ever heard of it? Uh, electrons leap away from metal. Uh, basically, right. This is the, this is this is this is not wrong idea. Then, what made making this happen then? Poor conductance. Uh, that, <laughs> that that's right. But here we were actually saying because you have leakage of current, therefore you have conductance. Rather than saying you have conductance, that's why you're leaking current. No, it's, it's not the other way around, right? We are asking what's the reason for leakage of the current, not the result of it. Well, if you introduce a new medium 
to the so circuit, then that can cause current to flow in different areas. Uh, that's basically correct. That's basically correct. How about my my understanding is uh, how about we just understand late decadal current as what? We're not insulating well enough. Right? We're not containing those current enough. Does it make sense? All right, yeah, we, we can just uh, have a rough idea of, about these terms and then we can move on. Um, this is the properties. And the transmission, transmission line, actually, let's see. The transmission line physically is made of what? Conductor. And you can see you later. And shoot wires physically. How do how do uh, make them? And uh, of course. Um, what it what is what what conductor we we use to to build a transmission line? What conductor? Generally, what's the uh, best in terms of uh, different different aspects? Oh, very good. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh, here is right. Aluminum, aluminum, or copper. Yep, very good. Depending on price, who is uh, he's, who is cheaper? Aluminum. Aluminum is cheaper. Very good. That's why it's, I would say nine out of ten cases that the transmission line is made of aluminum, not copper. Copper, uh, copper is less available. It's less available than the uh, aluminum. Aluminum is very easy to be available. We call it what you know, uh, in abundance supply, in abundance supply comparing to copper. And also aluminum, what's the uh, benefit? It's, 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 it's light, right? It's, per se, it has better uh, strength to weight ratio. Good strength to weight ratio. This, of course, matters. This really matters. In, uh, in the supply. Okay. Next to the uh, aluminum is copper. It's obviously. And also the the size, the conductor size, we're saying conductor size. And this size in you guys ever heard of this in mill, right? In mill, uh, mill is also a very popularly used term in what uh, making PCB, right? If you have ever uh, developed your own PCB, and you probably uh, know this. The software, in the software, you're using um, meal as the unit. Okay. You decide the size of the, uh, the, the wire, the size of the, uh, the trees as well. And one mil is how big? Anyone knows how big is one mil? Oh, of course, here this size is talking about diameter, right? 
it's, it's meaningless to talk about the, the length, obviously. We're talking about the diameter. One mil is how big? Any, anyone knows this? Anyone ever do anything like related? Uh, yes, that's right. Yes, Sawyer is right. 0 0.001 inch. 0 0.001 inch. No, no wonder why it's used uh, in the uh, PCB, right? PCB is very tiny, so. It's so very, very small. Next is more significant uh, parameter we, we need to understand. So what is the what is transmission line? Voltage level. Voltage level. And first of all, we're generally talking about the line voltage. Okay, line voltage. Line voltage. Generally speaking, is greater than sixty kilowatts. You want to use high voltage uh, to to transmit transmit the power, right? Uh, of course, why you, you want to use high voltage to transmit the power? Less loss from resistive. Uh, Less loss from the resistance of the transmission line. Why less loss? Well, less current, so less loss. Very good. Then why less current? Because resistance opposes the flow of current. And no. And what I'm talking about is is like a transformer, right? So uh, remember, we have transformer. It's a low side. Let's see, let's see, it's 100. This is a uh, low side. This this is the uh, upside, right? So this is a step up, right? Step up, transformer. So this voltage is low. This voltage is high. And after generating voltage uh, power, you need to boost it up by a step up transformer and to be transmit. So this is a transmission line. And the question is why we want to boost up the voltage because like uh, Sawyer and, and, and uh, John mentioned that because the last loss, why last loss? Less loss is due to the less current. And why less current? It's actually comparing to the low side here, the primary side, or say. Yeah. You have current here, you have current here, right? So secondary side, you have higher power, a higher voltage, then definitely you have lower current. In the primary side, you have low voltage, therefore you definitely have higher current, right? The reason is, yep, once again, Sawyer mentioned, the power is same, right? Power is same. Two power same, then VL times IH goes to VH times IL, right? That's the reason, okay, that's the reason. So on two sides of the transformer, you have same power, same power. So if you boost up the voltage, you definitely, Lower down the current. Lower down the current here. Loss along the transmission line just equals to the so the current going down, then the loss going down as well. The loss going down, then further making what efficiency goes up. Our transmission efficiency goes up.
And going back to here, uh, you want a high voltage. It's very high, actually, over 60 kilowatt. And but remember, it's it's not any uh, random value. Okay? Random value is standard priced standardized at 69, 115 kilo, okay, 138 kilo, 161 kilo, 230 kilo, 345 kilo, 500 kilo, 765 kilo. These are the commonly used uh, standardized uh, voltage level for transmission line. It's not any random value. Because it's very easy to, to imagine why we want to standardize the value, right? Because you have different voltage in transmission line, then you're going to corresponding the equipped with Standardize the transformer to lower that down to your load. Right? You need to feed in the load. Once you reach a certain substation, you want to lower down your voltage to feed your load, maybe industry or residential. Okay. You want to standardize all of the uh, voltage value. Uh, voltage. And of course, here, uh, here, if equal or greater than two thirty kilovolts, that is called EHV. If it is exceeding seven sixty five kilovolt, which is uh, possible, it's called UHV. There's some there's something there beyond 765. And so EHV high voltage, right? But E is what? And also here is a high voltage. U is what? E is in for which which letter? Extra. Extra. U is standing for what? Ultra. Ultra. Extra high voltage. Outer high voltage with boundary of 230 kilo and 765 kilo. And then these are some knowledge, and uh, we need to just need to have a roughly idea. Rough idea. Here, uh, introducing a new, a new thing, new phenomenon. Here, there's a, a skin effect. Now, what does it mean by a skin effect? Skin effect uh, is actually talking about AC when AC current. Flow through a conductor, which is obviously the transmission line. The current distribution is not uniform over. The cross section area because uh, the cross sectional area is generally speaking uh, just wrong, right? Is wrong, and uh, the current is go, go flowing through it, and the current or say density, let's say use the more accurate word, is a current density. 
on this area is different. It's different. It's not uniform. It has highest or say higher current density at the surface. Okay. Surface. What does it mean? So the majority of the current is flowing through this this way, right? Flowing through under dot com is terrible to do this flow through this way right into the paper right into the paper and density how how density is distributed majority of the current is flows through into the paper at the surface around the surface here not not much current density here you know. But let, let, let me ask you, because of this phenomenon then is introducing the resistance, because if you're uh, transmitting, once again, only AC, okay? Uh, DC doesn't have such phenomenon. The, the DC does not, okay? Only AC. So when you transmit AC, comparing to transmitting DC current, who has better, whose current is going through easier? Or say, just who has higher or lower resistance? Make sense of my question? Do AC current flow through? Okay, you, your, 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 your current density is not distributed uniformly. To DC, it is. Therefore, who has higher resistance? That AC transmit better than DC over distance, distance. Uh, what do it mean by transmits better? Well, Sawyer, agree with that. Kevin said lower line resistance. So AC has lower line resistance than DC. That's what you are saying, right? Okay. Any other thoughts? <laughs> because it's not right. More economical. Which means what? It can, let, let's just answer a simple question. Who has higher resistance? Who has lower resistance? Whose resistance is, is higher? Has, in other words, let me write this way. So AC resistance compared to DC resistance in transmission line. Who is bigger? Uh, to be honest, is the answer is uh, this. Yeah, the correct answer is this. And the textbook is is mentioning, generally speaking, AC resistance is approximately equals to 102% of DC resistance. AC has higher resistance. Correct. Okay. AC has higher resistance. In other words, the current is harder to go through due to the unevenly distributed current density. Your density is concentrating on the surface, then the, the surface is a small area. Is, so basically, it is not fully utilizing the entire area. You have a smaller space. 
smaller area to go through. So it's harder, isn't it? They're not fully utilizing the entire uh, cross-sectional area to go through. It's just like one, one gate, one big gate. All of us rush out by the side of the gate without using the middle of the gate. Guess what? It will take longer for us to go through, right? to get out. And uh, next time when the fire drill happens, we can try this, right? Yeah, online teaching is boring in terms of this. No one loves. So anyways, let's move on. Oh, yeah, here is also there's another constraint. And the textbook mentioned 102% is for 60 hertz. It's for six, uh, 60 hertz, uh, particularly. We can move on now. Now let's talk about the model. That's not modeling. Transmission line modeling. Well, first of all, uh, the basic idea is this. Okay, the basic idea you need to understand the uh, it is represented. by equivalent per phase circuit. Because transmission line uh, is obviously you have three phase, right? Yeah, three phase and we just use per phase circuit to represent it. And uh, we are doing the circuit analysis based on the per phase circuit as well. Therefore, per phase circuit means, means what? Means First of all, what you need is what? Phase voltage rate. Phase voltage. If Y connected, then you need to find the uh, nutrition, neutral point. Not nutrition. I'm, I'm a little hungry now. We need to find a neutral point, right? And okay, so phase voltage. And therefore, you need phase current. Correspondingly, and oh, not be yet. We have three models we can learn. Three so-called short line model. Medium line model and long line model right so these are referring to what short medium long they're, they're they mean what the distance distance how long is the transmission line absolutely matter okay you can easily tell that from uh, if you have some motor drive experience, you, you know your your supply line, a three phase line, the length of it absolutely matters. I don't know if anyone has related the experience. You you can't make it very long. Okay? You you make it very long, you're gonna lose a lot of voltage. It's terrible. Okay, so this, this phenomenon is very significant. You have to compensate the reactive power, otherwise you lose a lot of voltage. Anyways, here is is, is similar. You, the distance absolutely matter. Absolutely matter. You're feeding a load right next to your source, and feeding a load in say from this building to the rec center is absolutely different thing. Okay, absolutely different idea, right? different uh, equipment and system. So we have correspondingly different model. 
And here, uh, there's some boundary you need to understand. Since they are categorized by different distance, then you need to understand the boundary, right? So this short line means you equal or less than uh, distance. Medium means is between two boundaries, isn't it? Long means you are beyond certain distance. Does it make sense? So short line model, what's the boundary? is below 80. Be careful with the uh, unit. I like the unit because it's metric. <laughs> 80 kilometers. Okay. By the way, how many miles it means, which you guys like? Anyone knows 80 kilometers is how many miles? 50. Here we go. 50 miles. I don't have much concept about miles, but 80 kilometers I know how long. And medium is obviously beyond this value, right? beyond this value. And uh, below what? 250. That's again, kilometers. Kilometers, okay. not miles. And long is beyond 250 kilometers. Right. Well, because uh, I'm using red here to emphasize them, uh, because obviously in the exam, the problem is given. Which model you need to apply is the first thing you need to think, right? You need to think about. And it depends on what? Depends on the given the length of the transmission line. Okay? I'm not telling you which model you should apply. I'm telling you the length, the distance. You need to be careful. Uh, 80 and 250 kilometers, okay, not miles. Uh, anyways, any questions so far about, about, uh, about the transmission line, some co basic concepts here? Does everything basic make, basically make um, sense? We didn't talk about, because power lines usually transfer power in AC, right? Uh, yes. So we'd want to use that because the AC resistance is higher? No, no, it's not something good. I didn't say it's something good. Right, but then why do they use it? Well, your load is AC load. Are you going, are you have many DC load? You can, of course, I like the DC transmission line. I like a DC high voltage DC uh, power transmission. I like that. It's doable. I'm not saying it's not doable. Okay. Why then why AC over DC back in the day? Well, it's obviously easy, right? Your, your load at AC load. Your AC load or AC load. If you make the transmission, the, the, the DC transmission, that's doable. However, you need to invest more, isn't it? Right. Yeah, the Kevin is asking the same question, but your load is AC load. Your load, the major load, are, most of your loads are, are, are AC load. I mean, the transmission emitting AC as well. And you want a DC, okay, you, you need to add more power electronics. You add this DC transmission line, that's, that's fine. The high voltage DC transmission, that's fine. Hmm. You invest more. Yeah, you, you invest more. It's about uh, three fingers, right? Money. Uh, 
Any other questions? Anything? All right, then we can move on to some. Uh, specific circuit to some specific circuit here. So we, let's talk about short line. Short line model. Once again, eight kilometers. Because here, because it's short, some electrical properties can be ignored. The effect is, is uh, negligible. So we can ignore the capacitance. We can neglect that. And we do have impedance. We still have impedance. And with, without capacitance, we have we still have resistance and inductance, remember? So impedance Z is, is like this. And the total, of course, is a, a impedance, right? Impedance, this is plus the JX. And here, you need to be very careful. This R, this L, and this L are respective what? This R is the resistance per phase, okay? Per phase resistance. Per unit, and per unit. It's not per unit va uh, value, okay? Not necessarily per unit value, it's per unit length. Unit length is like what? Like this, right? Or maybe. Does that make sense? Th this is what I mean, okay? Per unit length. This L is what? Per phase inductance. per unit length as well, this capital L. And this, this lower, um, well, this is my way to write lowercase l, but hopefully uh, you can understand it. This lowercase l, outside of parentheses, this is representing what? Not difficult to guess, right? Exactly, the distance, right? The transmission line distance. So it makes perfect sense. So resistance and inductance, this is impedance. This is impedance. So the total is impedance per unit length, right? Times the length equals to the total impedance. This is the first impedance. Second, the circuit, the circuit. What they look like. It's so very easy. It's just very easy. If it is it is short, everything is easier. Everything is easier. There's a transmission line for a short distance model. A very very easy, very, very easy. Two pairs of ports, input ports, we call it VS as a voltage cross. And also we have a current into it. Output here, we have output voltage, positive, negative, VR, have receiving current here, IR. So in the middle, of course, the, the line is 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 exhibiting the impedance as property. And of course, you need to understand uh, Vs is what? And per phase. Per phase. Uh, 
Uh, by the way, the subscript S and R respectively meaning sending and and receiving end. So ES means per face, sending and face voltage. IS means the per phase sending and phase current. This is the per phase receiving end phase voltage. This is a receiving end phase current. And here I'm seeing a question, uh, Kevin asks, by design, we try to make a VS roughly equal to VR, correct? By design, how you make that happen by design? And the Sawyer's question is, so the bottom line is the neutral line, right? Correct. Now that's a point. This is neutral, neutral node. Okay, this line looks like line, but that's just one node, right? So neutral point. That's a neutral point. Correct. Neutral point. Uh, back to Kevin's question. He is saying somehow we want to make the VS equals to VR. Is that right or wrong, everybody? It's the bottom line question, obviously, right? Just, first of all, he mentioned. Try to make VS roughly equals to VR. Is right or wrong? Good or bad, we're saying. Oh, good, good. So first of all, this is a good thing. Okay, you want to make your VS equals to VR. VS equals to VR. As Sawyer mentioned here, that basically meaning you don't have loss, right? Uh, zero current loss. Zero current does the impossible. However, if you can make the loss very small, loss very small. Zero current, no, you're not transmitting anything then. Zero, zero current, of course, zero loss. However, you're not receiving any, any power either. <laughs> okay, you, you don't want to do that. Lower loss. The solution is to lower the impedance rather than lower the current. Well, if you can lower the current to guarantee the same amount of power, that's fine. That's fine. And uh, can say the, the peak proper material to avoid unnecessary loss in power. Yep, yeah, that, that makes sense. You pick different uh, material, you're going to have different impedance, of course. That's right. But the basic idea is very important. That's actually, they bring up a uh, point. You want to sending sending and voltage equals to receiving and voltage work as close as possible. Okay. Generally speaking, it's not possible to be safe. Not possible to be safe. All right. With this model, let's have some some equations here. Right? Some equations here. First of all, we generally speaking can know the VR and R. as the receiving end. We can measure how much current we are receiving and how much voltage we are receiving. Right? So how to based on the VR and IR to derive VS and IS? So first of all, what's the relationship between the IS and IR? Absolutely same. Okay, absolutely same. Absolutely same. Absolutely same. They're along the same line, of course, no matter what. It's your, it has nothing to do with Z. It's the same line. Then how to find Vs in terms of Vr and Ir then? Vs equals what? 
z times i r plus b r. And v per se, not v. John came up with this based on what? TBL, right? TBL. TBL. So this is the we are trying to express in the VS and the VIS in terms of the IR and the VR. And if we can even write them into a matrix format. Matrix format is you have vector VS, IS, right? You have a matrix times VR and IR, right? What's the dimension of this matrix? What's the dimension? Two by two, good. Okay, two by two. So four entries are respectively what? Here is what? First one. One, right? Here is what? Z. Here is one. Zero. One. Okay. I think this is something difficult to you, but uh, the reason we are writing them into matrix is uh, if we are dealing with very complicated power systems, the matrix is easier to uh, be programmed or calculated inside of MATLAB or any other software. Okay. This is the uh, relationship or say how to find the sending end voltage and current based on the receiving end current and voltage. Next is a new, uh, let's label this as As a bulletin like this, as a bar. Second one you need to know is so called voltage regulation. Voltage regulation, ER. Uh, definition is the magnitude change in. Percentage when going from no load to full load at receiving end. Is this the definition of the voltage regulation? So mathematically, V R just equals to what? Magnitude chain, right? Magnitude. So here it is V R no load minus V R full load. I'm sorry, this is the magnitude change is the subtraction between two magnitudes. Divide by the magnitude of the float. B R full load. Once again, numerator is the magnitude of V R no load minus the magnitude of V R full load. Denominator is the magnitude of V R float. Receiving end voltage from no load. Full load, right, the, the voltage change. Uh, by the way, the smaller the board, the, the bigger, the better. Smaller the better or the bigger the better. Smaller. 
the smaller the better. Okay, this is the, the definition. So a big voltage change from no load to full load. Well, so so this is a little bit like the discussion. Uh, it's actually related to the discussion we just had. No load means what? First of all, no load means what? Immediately, we don't have what? Anyone knows? No load means what? It's not only, no load set applies not only to this uh, power of voltage uh, regulation, but also to any, the motor drive, like the circuit, uh, these, uh, the DC to DC converter, no load means what? Immediately, no matter what. Just a line without load. Oh, I'm not asking for the, uh, the physical happening. I'm asking electrical wise. No load means what? Immediately. Yes, you're not feeding load. Yeah, correct. Means what? As an electrical engineer, you should immediately come up with this conclusion. Anyone knows? No load means what? No AC, what? No AC, well, no AC, you still, oh, here we go. Here we go. Uh, William and Anu are right, okay. Always keep keep this in mind. Okay, this is the, once again, it's not it's the universally valid concept in electrical engineering. As electrical engineer, we should immediately come up with this conclusion: open load, no load, no matter what, means open circuit. We're not feeding any load. Open circuit. Open circuit means what? It means no current. No current back to here means what? No voltage drop through the impedance Z. No voltage drop through impedance Z means what? Exactly, Vs equals to Vr, good. Okay. That's why no load is, is the optimal, is the optimal, is the optimal. Any uh, questions regarding this? You need to have a very strong concept on this. Okay, no load. So here. Okay. Uh, of course, here, uh, be, be very careful. This means what? In short line model. Okay. This conclusion just for short line model. Okay. These are no matter what. No, I mean, I mean here, these part are no matter what. This conclusion is just for a short line model. Medium, medium and long model, well, obviously not necessary. If you see the different circuit, okay, because of the model circuit here. And therefore, going back to here, this VR means something, generally general speaking, is given, right? Generally speaking, given. And is what? We are full load. Does it make sense? The voltage obviously is generally speaking is the full load voltage. 
I'm telling you, I'm receiving and I'm a load of voltage. I'm load my load voltage is is 10. Say it's not possible to be 10, but it is small value 10, then that's full load voltage. My load voltage is 10, then I'm, that is nothing but telling you the full load voltage at receiving end. We can stop here. Uh, the first lecture, and uh, see how one very tiny bit time left. But any questions regarding the uh, project? Any questions regarding the project? Uh, I got a quick question. Go ahead. Um, yes, or yesterday, last class we talked about, um, it's not about the project, but, oh. uh, what we, talking about? we talked about economic dispatch of generation, including power loss and generator limits, but yes, we didn't, yes. uh, we didn't get the equations for that yet. You can guess the equations for it. What do you mean by equation? Like um, to calculate lambda. You are talking about the that that's right. That's right. We basically, if I remember correctly, we ended by where we ended by after right after the establishing the L function, right? Yeah, the differential. Well, just the difference. And then the next, the next is to find the. Uh, CT equals zero, find the lambda, find, uh, find the U, U max, right? Uh, right. U, run U minimum. Yes, we ended by here. And then that's it. We didn't go further. Are we didn't we go further. Yeah, we start we start by here. It just this is kind of the end of the uh, the lecture of the module. Right. And and uh, well, that's the end. That that that's what planned. It's it's intentionally this way. Are we going back to that, or is that just? No, the end, as I said, is that's, that's the end. That's the intentionally stop there. Okay. Yeah, and well, first of all, the exam is not covering that part. Second, we don't have time, uh, enough time for further discussing that module. Oh, uh, okay. All right. I was just curious. Yeah, it's just not something uh, we're missing. No. Something uh, we have to. Well, one subject is enough for 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 us to study one semester long. Okay? Let alone we have up to how many modules here? Seven modules. Now, each one of them we can spend uh, one semester long to study, but we have to uh, we have to cut some of the uh, if it's too deep or any too. Um, but because the, the point is always try to understand the basic concept, the idea. This is, this is the most important thing. And uh, by here, if you understand why we are going to here, and the basic idea and how to proceed further, then that's enough. enough. You have to stop somewhere. Yeah. This is intentional. Yep. Any other quick? Sure, sure. Any other questions regarding the project? Uh, the the test circuit that you have on the project examples, would it be possible to get, I guess, correct answers for that just to verify that everything is going right? Because you have all the, I guess, the answers or the inputs here. I was wondering if we could get correct answers. Oh, the correct calculation answers for this, uh, for this problem, right? Yep, just to verify 
<laughs> uh, does anyone here realize the midterm exam problem is exactly this problem? Did anyone realize that? And the, therefore, of course, when, when we review the exam, you will see the correct answer, <laughs> or at least you know how to how to uh, how to calculate it and how to, how to receive the answer, right? Mm -hmm. did, did, did you realize that? I, I had recognized the circuit. I figured it was just one out of our notes that I had I had seen before, and the numbers were changed. But no, I'll just say it. it does. No, exactly same problem as this one. Okay, exactly same. So, <laughs> if you got the uh, that problem one hundred percent in the exam, when the, in here you know the, uh, the, the, the the correct answer immediately. Okay, the exactly same problem. Only difference is the number of the uh, boss. Okay. The only difference is the number of boss. And also the displaying your answers on your in your control your control panel. I, I guess I was having issues with that. Control. I was wondering if you had any. I guess if you go if you scroll up to how you have your your answer right here. This part, uh, the command window. I guess I was having issues getting the getting it to look similar to this on my. Uh, in my code, and I was wondering if you had any, I guess, any pointers on what to use to do this. Because I know I'm going to need a switch statement for each different case. Yes. I was just wondering what kind of command you use to display something like this. Oh, display, right? You you, mm -hmm. you know how to switch the cases. You have yeah. six cases, and you know how to switch. The command, you can use, like, uh, display. You can use uh, fprint. F printful. But let me write roughly. My 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 spelling might not be hundred percent. This is the one. I think I still have this. This two. Okay. Either one of them should work. Okay. Either one. Well, what do you want to do? Is go to help menu. You know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. To check the example of using either one of these, okay, check the example. Okay, you want to go to example. Okay. And uh, what are you talking about, oh, Sawyer? Use spaces to create create the space spaces. What does that mean? Uh, to format it so that they're all in one column. Uh, yeah. And also, I remember there's a special symbol to represent the space, right? In in this the in these two commands. Uh, yeah. It's, um. And if you use okay. a space for, to create space, <laughs> that that that's that, that's fine too. But but. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, you're talking about, you can also do a backslash tab. Be correct. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. Backslash tab. Or backslash. Something like that. Yep. Something like that. I know. Once again, uh, everybody, just go to the help menu to find the examples, the example code for using either one of them or any other printing uh, or displaying uh, function. Okay. You have some examples there to, to follow. And then you know, you know how to exactly use and try them out. Yeah, you, you need to do some debugging. This is the programming. No matter how easy it is, the first time running uh, won't work. It already happened. It already happened that the first running is successful. That, that's uh, that's rare. That's rare. A follow example and try some something out. Will be there. Okay. Any other concern? I know we are exceeding the uh, time, but if anyone do you want to talk more about project, uh, we can have uh, a little bit more time. Anything? When is it due?
Exactly in a week. All right, that's right. Exactly in a week. In a week from today. If you're if you're in the middle of con conducting it, you should be fine. If uh, you haven't started yet, you do you do not want to wait any longer. All right. So thank you for attending today's lecture and uh, talk to you guys next uh, Monday. Thank you. Bye-bye.